this is Candy's Quarantine Conversations with me, Candy Delore. Today I am joined by the beautiful singer and songwriter, Renee Baird. Hi, Renee. Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Candy. It's an absolute pleasure. How are you doing? Oh, thank you. It's an honour to have you on Candy's Quarantine Conversations. I'm so happy <laughs> to be speaking to you. I'm doing well, thank you. How have you been during this time of quarantine? Yeah, I've been doing okay. I think when it first happened, I had a little bit of a breakdown like most people did. It was very scary, wasn't it? You know, we realised this particular disease is killing people. So my first thing was myself, my family, my mum, my dad, you know, because I'm really worried because they're obviously the older generation. They're hoping that we're safe. And yeah, I had a meltdown. That's the first thing that happened. And then over, you know, I just had to pick myself up and say, come on, you just got to be focused, be positive like you always are. Um, Take precautions, make sure they have their masks and their immune system is good. My mum's cooking some amazing Caribbean food and all the old holistic stuff. So I'm pretty sure that will wane off any sort of COVID-19. Um, <laughs> just before the lockdown, on the 10th of February, I released my um, single Born Again. So it literally happened in the midst of the quarantine. And I was like, oh, my God, what do I do? But I realised, you know, show must go on. I didn't want to make it about myself. I said, the song's out there. It's called Born Again. It's going to hopefully inspire. Let that just do what it's doing. And then really think about what I'm doing at this time and use the platform in the best way pur purposeful as I could in a purposeful way and my team and I sat down and said look you've got a good following you're interacting you always used to go to events and be helping with brands why not reach out to brands now start working on some blog things related to the lockdown and the who are my series came up because I thought I like presenting like talking too much sometimes and all the brands that I've met or people I'm introduced to why not give them the platform at this time why it's so delicate for them to share their story and that's been what I've been doing it's been really successful it's amazing oh that's brilliant you know I did notice it on your IG page this morning I'm going to definitely check out the series Thank you. must be yeah. really interesting because I bet you meet in seriously interesting people along the lines of work that you do so I'm sure that yeah. you've got some great interviews there Yes, I have. No, it's been really good. As I said, yeah. I didn't even go into my book of people. Um, a few PR companies, in, you know, um, connected with me and said, we've got this brand. Would you like to interview? And I said, the platform is open. You know, whoever wants to come on. Who? It's, it's a bit of a daunting experience to go on anything like that because it's live, you know, literally yeah. press the button. <laughs> so a lot of people were a little bit nervous. But I said, it's just a conversation like we're having now. Yeah. I'm not a journalist trying to pretend I am. I'm just going to have a talk with you and you share what you want to share. And hopefully it just makes them feel better and give them opportunity to share who they are and and you'll be surprised some of the stories you don't realize what's behind how they created that brand and it's quite inspiring you know so yeah that's true yeah, yeah. most definitely um speaking on your single born again i've got to say that is an absolutely beautiful and elegant song i love it so much i was actually listening to it again this morning it's very addictive Thank and you've you. such a lovely, soft, sweet voice. And you know what else I have to say about you as well? Uh, as a female singer, I must say that I do feel a lot of respect towards you. And one of the main reasons why is because everything that you release, everything you do, it's always so classy and never trashy. <laughs> you know, it's very respectful. And I find that just so rare to see in this day and age, if I'm completely honest with you. You know, a lot of people feel they need to strip or speak, you know, slang or speak a certain way. But you're a very respectable person. And that's the first thing, apart from hearing, you know, your beautiful voice is what I hear first. <laughs> but that's the first thing I actually notice about you. You know, you're very different. And even the way you dress, you dress so sophisticatedly. And, you know, you're very fashionable and, like I said, respectful with it. And um, yeah, I, I love that about you. So can I ask you, do you have a stylist or is this just all you when it comes to fashion? <laughs> I have, I have um, worked with various stylists uh, along the way and I have to give props where props is due. But I come from a Caribbean Jamaican background and I remember my grandmother would always wear a hat and always wear Sunday best. And one of the things I was, was really important to always wear something respectful going to church. Um, and I think it, there's enough out there that um, of artists that will reveal everything. And when you have a platform, it's important for the young people that are watching all the way from 20s, all the way to six or three, 
years old to be able to connect with you. I don't want them to, their parents to feel embarrassed because Ray's on the stage and everything's throwing. Now I'm a curvaceous woman, so you're going to see the curves, but you don't have to show the curves. You can be sophisticated, classy, and still be very sexy. Um, so I kind of made it a thought of mine that I want to bring back that class into the industry. Um, our industry wants us to sell sex. That's what it's all about, sensuality. But I have actually, of my following, I have more men than I have women. So I must be doing something right. They're all over. <laughs> so I think they even can in that there's something that you're bringing, which is sophistication. And I, you know, around my apartment, I've got a picture of Dorothy Dandridge, Carmen Jones. I mean, she was everything sexy, but she had clothes on. You could see the curves, but it wasn't in your face. Um, so I grew up in a generation of parents that used to show me. And, I, I, you know, I thank my parents that taught me to be ladylike because it comes from somewhere, doesn't it? Yes. Um, and I want young ladies, whoever they are, colours, creeds, to feel that they can embrace my music, that mum, dad and the little one can watch my video or watch me present and go, oh, mummy, she's got on there, she's gone on that. Yeah. So I made a conscious decision, but also it's very much who I am. I like the heels and the hat and the gloves and the fur and all of that good stuff that you can present. So it's kind of come naturally into my music. But it's good that you feel that because I wanted it to be accessible to all. I can go to Malaysia and not offend or go to Dubai. You know, you have to be mindful of different cultures and blend in somewhat. Mm -hmm, most definitely. But yeah, moving on from that, would you mind telling the viewers a bit about yourself and your background, please? Yes, of course. Well, well, I got into the music industry at 14. It was actually a situation when I was in a studio. Um, I used to follow my dad around. My dad was in the music industry, just to go back a bit. Um, he was signed to a major record label, um, RCA, back in the 80s. So I was literally his, they used to call us um, Batty and Bench. It's a very Caribbean thing that they yeah. say. Everywhere I saw was me and my papa. And um, I used to go to festivals with him. So I would, all the different festivals that you see, like the Glastonbury and the open air concerts, I would be there with my dad backstage. So they would let me sit on a speaker and say, don't move from the speaker, but you can watch the band from there. So I've seen Sting perform, Sade, Tracy Chapman. I was a little kid, I was only about four. And I'd literally sit there with my mouth open wide thinking, oh my God. And um, there was one occasion that they were doing a changeover. So when you have different brand bands on stage, festivals, different bands would come and do a changeover to get the musicians ready for the next act. And in that between that, I ran onto the stage, grabbed the mic and started serenading the crowd. And my dad was backstage thinking, I know that voice. Oh, my gosh, she's up there. <laughs> that was, it, was, it was hard not to, you know, all that crowd that is there's an adrenaline that you get. Every artist will tell you if you're performing and you perform to those type of crowds. It's just infectious. And that was kind of my sign that I wanted to do that. But anyway, fast track. 14, I used to um, go to studio all the time. I'll be just literally sleeping with dad on the sofa and he'd be recording and I'd be in the late night sessions. And one of the backing vocalists, what they're called, didn't turn up. So I was like, oh, Papa, I can do it. It was like, what do you mean you can do it? I said, I can. So my uncle Linton at the time, he was in a band called Central Line. They had a number one hit. They were very successful in America. Um, so they were around the same time as Shalimar, that type of act, those acts. And um, he was the one who was recording. So. I said, look, I'm a bit nervous. I don't want dad there because he's really critical. You know, he's been in the industry. Let me see if Uncle Linton can record me. So he recorded me and they couldn't believe what was coming out of my mouth. I'm like, you are kidding me. This is like, we, we, we pay people to go and do backing. We can, we can use it. And that's kind of how it started. And, um, you know, years in the industry, but I was also educating myself because I think there's something very powerful about having entertainment experience, being talented, and I'm so grateful for that. But there's still a business element to our industry and there's a professionalism that's needed. So I recognise very quickly to educate myself. So I'm actually from a corporate background, legal and compliance. I'm very savvy in that world. So I understand my legal and my creative, which a lot of people didn't know about me. Um, so I've been quite um, top of my game in the corporate world, sat in a boardroom and all of that good stuff. So I was able to do things like that. But because I perform, it's very easy to talk to people. So they never understood why I could really do well in a presentation, but I can go and perform on the stage. So that was a way of funding my music career because people don't realise it's very expensive to be an artist. Um, it costs money to do amazing videos. It costs money to make songs, to record them, to get musicians to master them and to put it out. And then to elevate yourself to a level of marketing costs money. Because you, how, how do you get seen? You've got to pay for it sometimes. Some things are free, 
but a lot of it costs money. So I realized quite quickly I needed a stable role in order to fund my music. So I was literally from boardroom to stage is my hashtag. I would literally be working and go and perform at a gig or working, go and perform at Annabelle's. Things like that was happening. A lot of people didn't even realize that was my career until one a couple of times I used to do karaoke and they said, no, there's something going on here. <laughs> she can't do Whitney like that. <laughs> so that's how I get found out. Um, but little by little, the transition has happened where I am now funding myself, but my music is my main thing and influence is my main thing. Um, and then when you're an artist, there's so many people you connect with in fashion, beauty. Um, I ended up doing lifestyle um, writing in the food industry, which I'm so sorry for everyone that's in hospitality. It's really been affected, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. But I was walking and going to restaurants. And because I write songs, I was able to write about food. It sounds interesting, like a transition. Oh, that's but right I was eating. My street. Wow, that's brilliant. <laughs> eating way too much. Um, <laughs> and then I just work with different brands. So you become a singer, songwriter, influencer, but you have to be so multifaceted in our industry. You have to have much more income streams as well as more, more bows, as they say. Um, so yeah, so it's been a very interesting journey. I would never have guessed from where I started to where I am now, but it's been a lot of work and a lot of dedication and perseverance you've got to have in this industry, more than. Yes. Wow, yeah. well, everything that you just said is absolutely amazing. I mean, at such a young age, you weren't afraid to go on stage and take the mic and perform in front of the crowd. So you <laughs> definitely don't have any form of um, performance anxiety. Very brave and courageous. <laughs> I think too, you know, I, that every artist will say you always got to have that butterfly feeling. Like before I came to speak to you now, I always feel a little bit because it's all part of that adrenaline rush. So you use that to help you. But when you're on the stage and you see your audience, it just makes you feel good, you know, and you feel better and safe. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's brilliant. So how did you feel like when you wrote your first song and then you put music to it and then you actually listened and thought like, this is me, this is my music, you know, this is my song. What was that like? <laughs> It took me a little while to write a song. My dad actually taught me how to write because I never understood it. I was like, Pops, how do you do this? And he said, well, listen, you just got to write a story. And then within that story, there will be something that's repetitive. Like, OK, what do you mean? So he goes, write a story first. And then in that story, you pull out things which you feel have more presence. That's how he taught me to write. And then I wrote, I think it was the first song I wrote was the song called It's You. And it was with a guitarist. Actually, Dad taught me, but the musical connection, as in right, having a song and music to go with it, was a guy called Greg. And literally, he wrote. I wrote the song together with him. And then he was using the guitar, and a melody was coming. And then before you know it, the song was formed. And it just it feels weird listening back to something you've wrote, then composed, and then sung. Very, very strange feeling. And then even more strange when you write the song, compose, you engage, put it together see visuals and hear it on the radio now that blows your mind because yeah. that's like okay I, I remember how we did this and now people are listening back so it, it, it always surprises you every time I don't think there's ever a, every artist will always say you, when you create something it's every experience is different so some just blow your mind and you get really excited some you're like wow that's quite emotional to write because it's based on an experience or someone else but there's always something different about every experience of songwriting, I would say. Everything's different. Wow. Yeah. No, that, that must have been absolutely amazing. You must have yeah, really been blown away when you actually hear yourself back and see your music videos and stuff like that. Um, I just think it's brilliant how people manage to become so creative and put, you know, what's in their head out you know it comes out through their voice especially with singers comes out through videos because even the videos itself tells a story as well so it's absolutely brilliant mm -hmm. um so I wanted to ask you you know I've seen you perform um, I've seen little clips of you performing at lovely luxurious places and you always look so glamorous and beautiful and I wanted to ask you where have you um you know had the best performance of your career so far Okay, wow. I would say I was um, invited by a European Prime Minister to perform for an art gallery opening. That would have been, it was the mayor, the mayor was there and the Prime Minister and we did a big set. So that I would think was wow. And they found me on the net, just shows you how literally and then calls started coming and, you know, conversations and all the all things that you have to do to get you over to another country. So that was wow. 
Um, and also I represent, I'm an ambassador for um, a charity called the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund. Yeah. And that is like one of my, I say one of my moments of being totally blown away to be even quite, even requested to be a part of this charity. So Nelson Mandela set this up uh, many years ago. It was literally a charity he put money into to help the children in South Africa. Um, I'm very close to, who's now a friend, Kathy Scott, she's the director for the charity. And um, I've done loads of performances and engagements with them on behalf of the charity. So that I still can't get my head around because as a kid, we know South African apartheid was in our time. It was in our generation. So to see what happened, to see him president and fast track, watching the TV programs like everyone else did, to be a part of his legacy and help build and uh, that's it, enough said, you know, that blows any award or anything, you any performance, because that man is just, wow, what he stood for and what he stands for. Yeah. yeah so is life has taken the direction that I didn't even expect. You can't, in this industry, you never call what's going to happen next. You just trust the process and try your hardest to be respectful, keep your ego in your back pocket, have to, integrity is one of the key things, you know, I, no one I hope can ever say I've stood on them or tried to underhand them. It's not how I operate. And those things is what carry you because people want to work with you. They deal with your professionalism, things like that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That is an amazing opportunity. I mean, what a privilege to be an ambassador of the Nelson Mandela Children's uh, Charity. That's just, that's amazing. And then to be flown to another country and perform for the prime minister and, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So and to know that they found you on the net, you know, that's just, they found me. I, they actually told me they. I did a performance at Annabelle's, which is a very well known and um, higher level members club. It's actually very. It's even got more notoriety. It's all got even more excitement right now because it's had a refurb and everyone's like, oh, "Wow, this is one of the places to be." And um, it was a friend of mine actually, Britta Bam Vesdo, who connected me with at the time. I think it was George who was the um, director or manager of Annabelle's, and my. I had to walk around with a CD. Because CDs were the time, right? And I gave that over to um, my friend and she made the introduction. And then he lit literally listened to it and said, I want her. And it was like Lady Gaga performed the week before and the week after I performed. And I was an unknown independent. So I blew them away to that point where they wanted me to do a set. And it was beautiful. It was lovely. It was an hour set, half an hour segment. So you do half an hour, go away, come back. And everyone was having a great time. They all dance into reggae. It was... <laughs> It's so funny. And they loved it. So that's, and then from that performance led to the Prime Minister performance. You see, you see, one thing always leads to something else special. Yeah. That is amazing. I mean, that is an absolutely inspirational and motivational story. Just those two things within itself. Just, wow. Yeah. Wow. One, I think one of the things that I was always taught is you've got to step on faith. You've got to sometimes. Some of the places or, in, or situations that you don't really want to do, you're like, oh, I could, could do without that today. I've gone to events and what one person I've met has introduced me to somebody else that then gave me an opportunity, which was amazing. So sometimes, even when it's a bit weird or uncomfortable, you've got to follow your instinct and just follow the process because you just never know who you're going to meet along the way and who you're going to connect with, you know, and whatever you leave with that person, they introduce you. Because a key thing in this industry or any industry is referrals. You want people to ring and go, oh, you need to go meet her. Or, and that's yeah. happened a lot to me. So that hopefully is a testament to how I deal with people and my professionalism. Yeah. So I just go with it, you know, go with it. I agree. I do agree with you, definitely. So speaking about being inspirational, um, can you tell us a few of the singers who inspire you, please? Wow. Um, oh gosh, I'll be here all day, but I'm going to give you, <laughs> um, when it comes to a voice of an angel, it has to be Whitney Houston. Um, I literally used to absorb everything about Whitney. My soprano is taught by her. Um, it's a sad case what happened towards the end of her, but I just remember the best of her. And even thinking about Whitney as an artist, I emulate a lot of her class. Cause if you think about Whitney, she had her clothes on and she wore them well. Yeah. She'd wear turbans, she'd wear gowns. She was just absolutely exquisite. So in so many ways, she inspired me by her vocals, which were like flawless in every point. 
um, and her look, her finesse. So definitely Whitney. Um, for the current time, or we'll go back again, um, we have Aretha, who we've now lost, the Queen of Soul, had energy of a, she was a powerhouse, um, a wow, <laughs> and still a wow to me. When you think when she sung Natural Woman, I saw um, her sing for the Michelle Obama, I watched the performance, and it was just, I was crying my eyes out, because she just, it's her song. She sung it in so much passion, and she's a powerhouse. So um, definitely Aretha. Um, current times, Beyonce, she's sass, she's fiery, she's yeah. determined, she, she's everything. She's a businesswoman, you know, she stands for everything when it comes to us as a, a woman of colour, because that's what she is. Yeah. She always shows you that she is. So the current time, I love her energy and her perfection and her excellence is what's amazing. She doesn't, I don't think she's ever faltered. I don't think she's ever made a mistake when she's performed. She's that focused and that driven. Um, and then obviously who created that mantle was Michael Jackson. He was out of this world and Prince. Um, reggae music, Bob Marley. I grew up listening to that all my life. Um, and current gospel. I'm actually into gospel. There's a guy called Smokey Norfolk. I never think you've heard of him before. But his voice to me is like healing to my soul. That's the best way to describe it. He, everything about that gentleman, he's a pastor. But his vocal, he's a small guy. And his vocal is like, how can you sing like that? <laughs> so from a gospel perspective, he just blows my mind every single time. And then loads of artists that have come up. I love Ed Sheeran from our country, England. I think he's fantastic. Guitar, I love his songwriting ability. is phenomenal. Um, so I, I, anything that moves me, you know, I'm not, I don't like this style of music. If I hear something, my ear goes, oh, this is good. It could be indie, it could be rock. If it moves me, I'm excited about it. But as an artist that have, you know, you know, set the mantle and made me stop and think, Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye, I can keep going, you know. And they do all tend to be black acts, but let's not pretend when it comes to soul and R&B music, yeah. we were the innovators of that. Yes, um, so I'm so blessed to have had that catalogue of artists to kind of go back to and go, how did you do that again? Yes, yes. Amazing. Wow. So... At this moment in time, who are you really feeling to the point where if you had a chance to collaborate with them, who would that be? Which artist would that be? You know who I do really love? Um, I love Ed. I think he's fantastic. I think we would merge quite nicely together from a songwriting perspective. This is um, him here um, in the, I would say the UK um, entertainment channel. I love Usher very, very much so. I do R&B soul. I think he epitomizes that in this current time. And he's been consistent. He's been consistent. Yeah. Good. Do you understand? Like there's a lot of artists you hear and they come and they disappear, but he has been consistently a great act. And, you know, I can tell you a story about him. Um, my uncle um, was one of the first, and when I, when I say uncle, he's like a friend of the family. And he brought over back in the day, all the R&B acts. So SWV, um, I think um, Silk, I'm trying to think of all the different names that you would know, uh, Silk, yes. uh, Brandy, oh, wow. yes, <laughs> and, MC. and Usher, and I saw him perform way before he used to see him dancing, like you can't imagine how he dances now, and he had his first single out, and he was performing on the stage, literally walking from one side of the stage to the other, and that night they congregated in the Hilton, I remember, in Edgware Road, and um, I was with my dad. My dad would just bring me to all the different shows and things because it was his friend that did it. And Usher's mum, J J Pat Pat, I think that's her name, J Patnan. Apologies if it's wrong. Brandy had to go to bed. I'll never forget it. Right? Brandy was wanting to hang out in the foyer, and they were playing on the piano, and she couldn't stay up, but Usher could. Right? And I was on the sofa watching Silk and a whole lot of other artists performing. And we was young. We was you know young teenagers, and his mum said to me, could you keep an eye on him? If, if you're going to sit here, can he sit next to you? I said, yeah, of course. And he sat right next to me. And we was both watching these artists because we were both in awe. And did I even think fast track? Because there was no selfies or cameras or anything. I was rolling with people all the time, seeing artists like Snoop Dogg and Teddy Riley and not thinking nothing of it. But did I know that next to me was going to be him who was out of this world and successful? I had no idea. We just what was on the sofa together like kids. That's yeah. amazing. So to wow. see where he the way he is now, and I just love his voice. I think he's got a very classic R and B sound. I think 
He understands the class element. I, I see that much about him. He comes from a beautiful household. His mother is an epitome of a businesswoman because she was his driving force to be where he see right now. So if I think there's two different worlds, you've got the Ed Sheeran, which is pop, and then you've got R&B, and they're the two men I would love to collaborate with. And then there's other artists, you know, um, Mula, the people who are in Brazil. I love to try anything. You know, when you can sing and you can write songs, you collaborate with anything that sounds good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. yeah, that's the look. Yeah, I can't wait to see him again and say I remember you. And yeah. if I tell him, remember because it was his first show in the UK. So you don't forget your first show. Yes, he'll definitely remember you. And remember. I think that that collaboration is probably you know, it's um something that is probably in the making about you even knowing it. Maybe one day in the future. Put it in the. I put it to the universe. My whole life has been based around things I speak out. And it's not impossible because there is a connection exactly. and there's other connections that happen anyway. So, you know, if, if I raise above the radar in a moment, Born Again is doing very well in America as well, that a lot of the attraction yeah. is happening there. So I leave in it all. And Atlanta is a very much my place that I'm back and forth. I have a partner that's from there. So it's very possible. Yes. <laughs> it's very yes. possible. So we'll see, huh? Yes, I'm <laughs> sure that I will see that come to fruition. I'm very sure that that is going to actually happen in the future. And a lot of UK and US artists are collaborating, you know, more often now. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if one day I just see you on, you know, Vivo or MTV. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's my name of Asha. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, I, I, I so believe in manifestation. I'm really big on that. And I think a lot of people have to be so careful about what they speak into their life. Yeah. And everyone that knows me, my family will attest, I speak nothing but positivity in my life. I'm like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And it's not a conceitedness, or it's not actually me being arrogant, it's me believing. Because yeah. you have to believe it first, and you believe it, then you start acting according, and the right. actions that Definitely. you give will start manifesting what you want in reality. And I have seen that happen in my life, where I've spoke it one day, and literally, I, I, I'll give you an example. Um, I was, because of the charity, I was um, given the opportunity to go to the Long Walk for Freedom, Long Walk for Freedom um, premiere, which was done with Naomi Harris, who played Winnie, and Idris Elba, who played Nelson Mandela. And I went to the Royal Variety performance, Royal Variety, um, sorry, the Royal premiere, my apologies, and um, I was there with my brothers. So me and my brothers walked the red carpet. And actually, we walked it with Joan Alma Traden, would you believe it? Another superstar who said, could you walk with us? I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Can we walk with you? <laughs> so we've got a picture, actually, um, it's in my mum and dad's house of that actual moment. Anyway, we forward track, we watched the movie. And sadly, on that night, Nelson Mandela passed away. It was really sad. It was a very sad moment, a very poignant moment. Um, and obviously we was going to have a party after, but that wasn't going to happen in, under those circumstances. So a lot of us kind of, as we walked out of auditorium, just was very somber and just kind of reflecting because this man's gone. Um, this legend is gone. And um, I was then interviewed by CNN. I remember it at the time and I was just talking because I realised as an ambassador, they kind of grabbed me. My brother said, oh, she's ambassador speaks. So I kind of spoke. Um, and then I did something for Times as well at the time. Someone was walking. It's everywhere outside the auditorium. They just wanted to know how people were feeling. We just watched the movie. And then we just heard that he's passed away. Anyway, um, we was we had what normally happens in these premiere events. You have like a reception. So we had a reception at the Rainforest Cafe with everybody was there who was present. And I remember my, I'm very close to my brothers who are also my producers, I must add, saying to my brother James, I need to go onto the TV, you know. One day I'd love to, for the right reasons, get onto TV. So he was like, okay, sis, left it at that. Now, after that event of losing Mr. Mandela, I was then asked the next morning to go on Sky News to talk on behalf of the charity and Nelson Mandela. And I got, obviously, the night after. Do you see what I'm saying when you speak? And it wasn't that I was speaking about me. And sometimes what happens when it comes to opportunities it's not your it's not for you to shine it's for something else to shine but you're given that opportunity in amongst it yeah. and I literally spoke it the night before and the next morning I was in sky speaking on behalf of a legend of an icon yeah. so you just don't know <laughs> just see how it can just literally just happen but yeah. it has to be I just thought it has to be for good what is that you are going to want to speak out 
you know, one of the scriptures is life and death in the power of the tongue, life and death yeah. in your tongue. So powerful. So you yeah. speak life to people, speak prosperity, abundance. All these things are really important. So mm-hmm. I believe in it. I've seen it. I've seen it manifest. I've seen it happen in my life. I and I'm just going to... I think it's, you know, it happens even more when you do speak these things into your life. You have people who are actually supportive of you and listening to what you're saying instead of rubbishing you or just like, oh, okay, well, she's just talking or, you know, I've heard it before or whatever. So, you know, like you said, you were telling your family you were going to do certain things and I'm sure that they are supportive, you know, they've got your back in it. And I think that makes all the difference when you've got a supportive family who support you, you know, in your dreams and your wishes and want to genuinely make, you know, see it come true for you. So I think that, you know, that's so important as well to have people in your life who are supportive of your dreams and the things that you want to make happen. No, definitely. As I said, and my brother laughs, he goes, maybe you said that, sis, and, you know, I believe you when you speak. I'm like, we laugh together. But as I said, it's just raising vibrations of positivity. It's so important. And it's even more important in this time, isn't it? You know, I, I told you at the beginning, I did have a, a meltdown when we found out about the lockdown and COVID-19. Mm-hmm. But then little by little, I said, no, let me be me and raise the vibrations and start bringing positivity. Because with the positivity, things happen and good things start to happen. Mm-hmm. So it's easy said than done because we all have our moments but if you think isn't it better to put a smile on than put a frown you know it's, it makes people feel good. you see someone walking down the road happy you want whatever they've got you're like who's yeah. this person I yeah. want to smile like you it's yeah. true and it's so lovely that you speak about your brothers because um well I've been following you on social media for a few years now and I always see you post pictures about them and you know with lovely quotes and captions and I can tell that you're quite close with your brother, so that's that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I adore them. I d- they've they've been very instrumental in my career, as when they were young. Because not everything went according to plan. Some you know producers along the way things didn't work out, and they were little and they were like, "Oh, I'm going to work with you one day, sis. Don't worry." And now they're my producers. Everything behind the scenes is my brothers. Yeah, Born Again was done by them, and my oh, cousin as well. My yeah, they're so seriously the family. Talented. Yeah. So I would do my brothers back in vocals. My they would do mine. We would sit down, and listen to the final mix together, and we're like, mm. it can be hard when all of us are musical, but at the same time, at least we're going to know that we're going to trust each other's opinions, you know. Yeah. Um, yes. But I adore them. They're they're beautiful boys. They're really, I mean, men because I won't call them boys, but they're beautiful <laughs> men. And um, they've got my back and you need that in this industry. There's a lot of people that are against you, people yeah. literally willing you not to succeed. So when you've got your people that actually believe, it, it's so important. It's really important. You need that in anything you're doing, you know? Yes. Oh, I'm happy mm. that you have that. And um, it, I think it definitely, you know, you can tell even in your pictures, just with your smile and <laughs> everything like that. I know that, um, yeah, you definitely do have good people behind you and, like you said, you need that. You need that. So um, can you tell me about like your favourite part of performing and why it's your favourite part? <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. You know what I love? I love when I interact with the audience. Um, I do it in some parts of my set. And what a set is, is just a part of your performance. I kind of then start talking to the crowd. So you, depending on how you do your um, sort out your set, your lineup of music. You might come in singing, and then you start talking, or you might talk before you sing. Yeah? yeah. But I love when I can interact with them, or if I'm doing a song that they know, because we do as independent and up and coming artists mix songs that we've written as well as covers. So Born Again, as you know, is a cover song, which people think is mine, but it's the way I've done it. They didn't recognise that it was actually an old song back in the day. Um, so. What I love to do is get them to interact and sing with me and talk to them. Have a laugh because people who know me, I, I've got the craziest sense of humour. So I want that to come over when I'm performing and have a good time with them and let them feel part of the journey. Because it's very easy for us to be up there as celebrities, as artists and think it's about us. It's not. It's about them. So if I do recognise somebody looking at me, I will then say, hello, Queen, or you're beautiful or make them feel included. Mm-hmm. And it's not me doing that prescriptively. It's me actually feeling what they're giving back. Yeah. So that interaction, I think, is fun. Yeah, having a good time with them. Well, that's brilliant. Um, I love your answer because it's true. We don't really think about how um, artists 
plan, you know, how they're going to come out on stage. And you're right. Some come out singing, some come out talking, some do a bit of both. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I, as I'm performing, I'm watching my audience because you have to. So you're, it's a lot. People don't realise if you're doing, for example, we might go and do a performance and it's a few songs. You've seen that happen. Sometimes you see that people do it with a backing track. Sometimes people do it with a guitar and a piano. They're kind of acoustic-y kind of sets. Then you have a full band. Now, you've got to remember, we would have rehearsed that to death to learn every element that could be possibly happen and good, bad or indifferent. But you still don't know on the night what the energy from the audience is going to be. Mm -hmm. So you still adapt, slightly tweak your performances according to what you see. So when you're on the stage, you're having to remember things that you've learned and also engage with your audience and allow them to feel included. Because the worst thing you can do, you're performing, it's about you performing and they don't feel they're getting anything back mm -hmm. from it. So you're having to, as you're performing, watch your audience interaction. And what's so cute about when I have performed, there's always somebody that's your complete and utter groupie. Like, it's amazing. They're there. <laughs> no matter what anyone else is into it, they're into every song. Like, they know it, the song. They're in front. And then it, I love it because you see them and you think you have to shout them out. Like, here's yeah. the lady in the blonde or here's the, because that person is fully engaged in every part of your performance. And then you kind of vibe for them and also everyone else. But what you want to do is make them smile. And I, I, and it brings me joy when I am performing and I look in the audience and people are smiling, then it means I'm making you feel good. And that's half the battle, isn't it? Yeah, um, and still, if it's a slow or a ballad, there's elements that you might make them feel heartfelt and a little bit reflective, but you don't want them to feel depressed because that's the whole plan is to make them feel enlightened. Yeah. Mm. So you've got to be really mindful of who's there and the climate, the time, you know, under COVID, we're very aware of what we're singing. We can't sing anything too happy because people think, actually, do you know, I've just lost my job mm. or I'm furloughed and I don't know if I'm going to have a job after. Yeah. Or actually I've lost somebody. We're so, we should be as artists aware of what we're giving out at certain times mm -hmm. and seasons because if you go and do a show and something really uh, um, a certain time or climate and something's bad has happened in society you have to really consider that when you're performing and that's what I have to do and I would I would think a lot of artists do do they're doing it now you know in the, the climate climate of COVID we have um, the Black Lives Matter climate mm -hmm. people are adapting creating songs or bringing back songs yes. um, one of the most powerful things that I saw in the season was Kirk Franklin brought a whole load of artists gospel artists and mainstream and recreated his song called Smile Heaven um, if you haven't seen it anyone go and check it out it was because we needed to feel that we can smile, even when we're in trouble. And the song was so impressionable and so spot on for this season. But he didn't create it then. He did it eight years ago. See how life is? The yeah. so songs can be back to life and be just so relevant. That's so true. So relevant. You know, Lean On Me has been relevant. You know, yeah. all these songs that have been created years ago, some of them are not even here anymore. They've passed on to glory have been so powerful so we have such a big uh, mantle and a charge as an artist to ensure that when we are doing our job we're aware of everything that's happening because it's not about us we're just using our gift to give a gift to others we really are it's true and I must say you've definitely given new life to born again have you ever had any challenges in your career that you've had to overcome oh yeah I think it's a regular, it's a re regular challenge, isn't it? Um, most recent releasing a single in the midst of a climate of crisis is a challenge. Um, obviously, I had to readapt and think about my campaign. You know, I spent a lot of money on the music video and all the things that connected to it. So that was a challenge in itself. But I, as you said, I flipped it. I said, I've got to make it about other people and use that platform in the best way. So that's the most recent thing I would say was a challenge. But I adapted and overcome it. Um, in general, you know, as an artist, not everyone's going to like your style, what you stand for. And that can be hard because music is so connected to you as an artist and it comes from you. It's your soul expression. Um, so it's hard dealing with criticism and you've got to be thick skin. And I am definitely that, but it still hurts, you know, and I am close to my industry. So I see the feedback firsthand. You know, people always wonder, and I have management and teams, why people have managers so it's filtered down because can you imagine if you really heard what other people really think about you as an yes. artist 
And not to say you can't handle it, but it is tough to hear because mm -hmm. most artists, I'm not sure everyone can attest, it comes from a place of love and a lot of, it, a lot of it's our experiences that we're sharing and off, off pouring our soul to you every five minutes. Yeah. And then suddenly someone slams hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard getting told you way. It's hard that the press will come for you at times. And, you know, I will look at some of my press pictures or when I've done things for Rex and for Getty Images and I look to myself and I was like, oh, you've been eating too much pies in that picture or that <laughs> footage. <laughs> I didn't think that, right? But then you look at it and you're like, God, what are they going to think? You know, that's Renee one day, that's Renee the other. But guess what? I'm huge. I am not picture perfect every single day. And anyone that tells you in the industry that these women are absolutely like size eight, size, it, no you'd be surprised what they can do when they put that camera tune in and yeah. retouch and it is this world mm -hmm. so I think sometimes it's good if I blew up a little bit because I'm human you know I'm not yes I need to keep a weight at a certain level because it looks better on camera yeah. but I'm human I will want a pie or a chicken leg more one day yeah. you know <laughs> I can handle that. Um, and I hope that enables people to feel that we are human because I think we need to be so careful in our industry to give a false impression because as I said they can they can retouch videos not that my video was retouched I must add retouch videos they can retouch pictures so who who are you seeing and then you, you meet somebody in real life you're like oh my god that's such and such one you'll see them when they're like normally four foot nine because they're normally really small and normally they're like a person like a you don't look nothing like your pictures yeah. so it's good when you're able to show good and bad moments, because we mm -hmm. have good and bad moments in our life that might force us to eat a bit more, or we might have a breakout. Like my skin was breaking out like crazy over the last few weeks and my skin is only flawless. It is human, yeah. you know? Yes, so I right. think we have to as entertainers show the good side. You see it a lot in Instagram where people will show you the before and after or they might actually unfilter stuff. I think that's important too, because yeah. it empowers people who are watching you to feel that it's okay to have a bad day. You know, but when you have a good day, you look amazing. You know, I'm back on my routine of training. So just, so you, you know, there's a few pounds, but I'm not killing myself. You see what you get, you know, as long as I look good in the outfit, I'm human. And I want people to feel that connection other than I'm just look yeah. like I'm going to leave some lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not kidding anyone that, but you do understand, let's get it real here sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, I definitely <laughs> agree with what you're saying. It's very true. And um, regarding, you know, if the press or people that talk about you, I mean, you've just got to remember they don't know you. They, they don't, they've not walked in your shoes. They've not felt your feelings that you're writing about before. You know, some people just can't relate. And that's why they speak a lot of, you know, things that they don't understand half the time. Um, so, yeah, you just, you are amazing. I think everything you're doing is absolutely brilliant. And I hope that, not even hope, I know I'm going to see you achieve more and more and more. <laughs> and um, I wish you all the best of everything that you're doing. But there is actually something that I do want to find out about you. <laughs> and I want to ask, what do you do like in your spare time when you're not singing and making music? That's the thing, what do I do? Okay, um, I'm a bit of a workaholic, I'm learning to work smarter than harder. It's one of the hardest things anyone will attest who has a business of any sort, or they are, they are the business, is to hold back and know that they can have a day off occasionally, yeah? Um, I like watching movies. I haven't, in all fairness, done enough because I've been so busy. I've been more busy in this lockdown than normal. I love comedy. I like to laugh. I think laughter is the healer of everything. So I will watch things like Bridesmaids and Han Hangover, and I just love to have a good belly laugh. Yeah. So in my spare time, you'll catch me watching comedies and things that just raise that vibration. Um, into my fitness, as I said, I've had my moments of too much chicken legs. Yeah, I may admit <laughs> that. Um, but I'm really into fitness, so I've got an amazing spinning bike that um, I do need to spend more time on. But it's um, amazing. So that's something I love to do. And um, and try and rest. You know, when you have a business, you've, you're always working on the business. So I'm having to schedule more me time. I, if I say to anyone that's got any any business that they're running or they've been in and had for many years, you have to have time out. Actually, you work better. And I think I've had to learn the hard way. I urge anyone just to try to w work smarter and schedule time in to relax yes. 
you know so comedy movies family time and even though I work with my family I still enjoy hanging out and doing I'm always with them always with my family um but I'm very lucky in my business I do lots of recreational leisure things so <clears throat> excuse me I will go and review a restaurant when people were eating but I'm still eating and reviewing yeah. so I do a lot of stuff that people might do as leisure actually still work <laughs> Yeah. So it's hard to say the separation sometimes, you know, yeah. but um, you understand it's difficult because my work is almost my fun too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just spending more time with my own leisure. I need to do more of that. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Well, it sounds like you have a lot of fun when you're not, uh, you know, doing both things, when you're singing, when you're performing, <laughs> when you're not. <laughs> so, and, I just enjoy life, as I said, you know, this season must have showed everybody that we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We just have no idea. A lot of people made plans for this year. I did. I was like, 2020, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And it literally just got stopped. Yeah. And we had to stop and go, OK, what are we doing now? How are we going to rejig what we had planned? And then sometimes you think, actually, no, let's just trust the process, because this is what we're really bad at. We have this plan and it's a bit conceited of us to say we are going to do this next year how do you know you have no idea so now more than ever I'm just walking in faith and I'm walking every day and just seeing and just keeping happy and just say okay today I wake up I'm healthy what does today bring yeah. you know and really go for what's yours now I say to anybody do not leave it till next day tomorrow next year now is the time because god forbid and those Poor people who had plans and they're not here no more. People, we lost a lot of people in the UK and the world to this horrible infection. So if anything anyone should learn is how important family friends are more than ever. Your health is number one. And going for what you believe in. Don't wait. Go for it. This is life is about living and experiencing it right now. I definitely. definitely agree. Oh, that's some wonderful advice. And you are a wonderful lady. And um, everyone who's watching, I highly recommend you go and check out Renee's single, Born Again. It's so beautiful. Uh, it will, you know, calm you down any time of the day. It's an addictive <laughs> song, so you'll definitely have it on repeat. And check out her other songs. How can people listen to your music and follow you on social media? So um, I have a website. So it's www.renebird.com. Um, that's R-E-N-E-B-Y-R-D dot com. Um, I'm also Rene Bird Official on Instagram, um, Rene Bird World on Twitter and Rene Bird Official Global on Facebook. But if you do type in Google, I do come up, which is a blessing. And you'll see all the different things that I'm doing. And my music's available online as, long, as well as YouTube. So it's all there. And I'd love to hear people's feedback. I do communicate with people all the time. I'm not that standoffish kind of artist. It's good to connect with people that connect with you isn't it yes what a beautiful name Renee Bird who named you your mum or your dad okay so my <laughs> middle name I, you'll find a lot of artists they have other names it's my pseudonym but my middle name of my legal name is Renee and Bird my dad gave me because he said a bird sings That's it. yes love that very mm. lovely name I must say it stands out <laughs> thank you Thank you. Well, it has been super talking to you and I thank you so much for coming on Candy's Quarantine Conversations and I wish you the best with every single thing that you do um, you. but I know that I'm going to be seeing a whole lot more of you <laughs> I know that it's just a matter of time as well before I see you all over the place on different platforms Thank you, <laughs> well, thank you. and it's, it's a pleasure to have someone give me that honoured feedback. I really appreciate it. As I said, we're only as great as people who like and want to be engaged with us. So it's good that you're seeing that. And I'm really trying my hardest to leave something special behind, huh? Definitely. You will. You, will. you definitely will. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Renee. Take care. God bless you. God bless you too. Bye. Bye. Your softness. Darling, don't you know that you I'm born again Come give me your sweetness Now that you there is no weakness
最轻松。